Welcome back everyone to the weekly NeoVim slash Vim plugin video series. So if you're new here, this, this is a series in which we cover one NeoVim or Vim plugin per week. I try to post a video every Friday. So this week we're covering uh, a really cool plugin called NVim LSP Config. Now, for those who are not familiar with LSPs, LSPs, it stands for Language Server Protocol. And it's a, uh, it's a server that runs on your machine, which interacts with Vim to provide several language-specific features like intelligence features, code completion, method signature completion, uh, helpful pop-ups, diagnostics, syntax er error diagnostics, and things like that. So you can kind of think of it this way. You have your computer here, and in your computer, you're running a process called NVim. And you also have another process called the language server. We'll call this LS. In our case, we're going to be running the Lua language server. These two processes are going to communicate with one another to provide language-specific features to NVim. So as you're coding, you can see what syntax errors you have, and you can see really cool completions. You can see method sig signature helpers and things like that. So that was a really brief primer on what LSPs are and how that works. Um, this In this video, we're gonna cover how to configure NVIM LSP config. We're gonna install it using the lazy plugin manager. We're also gonna show you some key mappings with LSP config because I, I feel like the key mappings just make it a lot easier to uh, navigate your code. And we're also going to show some usage commands. So we're gonna show um, code actions, how to invoke code actions to automatically fix any syntax errors. We're gonna also show you code completions for functions, function signatures. And uh, also, I'm going to show you some really nifty LSP commands, NeoVim commands that are helpful. All right, so with that, let's dig in. So here we are in the init.lua file. And as you'll notice, right now I don't have LSP config installed. I don't have it configured. And uh, you'll notice that if I were to make a syntax error on purpose, so you get rid of those curly braces and that parentheses there, and I save the file, um, nothing really is uh, indicating here that there's a syntax error in the file. So I can save the file, I can close it without a problem, and uh, NeoVim is going to allow me to do that. Um, and then when the next time I open NeoVim, it's going to complain that I have a syntax error somewhere. So this is uh, makes it kind of difficult to develop iterative iteratively, because you'll just have to figure out where you have that syntax error each time you make one. There is an easier way, and that's with LSP config. All right, so let me show you how to install LSP config. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be using the Lua language server because that's what we're developing our Lua plugins with, and our that's what we're making our NeoVim configs with. So before we can make this work, we need to install the language server itself. It's called Lua language server. So if you go to Google and just type Lua language server, you'll get this page here. And it just tells you exactly what it is and how to install it, whether you're on VS Code, NeoVim, and so forth. So we're going to hit the NeoVim option. And uh, when you click that, it shows you how to install it on your system. You can use Scoop, Brew, or Mac ports. You can also install the latest release or build from scratch. So I've already installed Lua language server. Just keep in mind that you must have it in your path. And to verify that I've had it in my path, I'm gonna open up toggle term and Lua language server version. You can see there I have 373. Cool. All right. Well, now that I have Lua language server installed, I can go and install NeoVim LSP config now. So if you saw my last video, I switched to a new package manager called Lazy, and I keep all of my plugin installation directives in a file called Plugins Lazy. So I just open up Telescope here to search for that file, hit enter, and now I'm here. 
This is a very simple file. It just lists all of the plugins that I want Lazy to install. At the very bottom, I have already have NeoVim LSP config. Great, so I'm gonna uncomment that with GCC using the comment plugin. And I've also added another one here that we'll talk about a little later, CMP and Vim LSP. So I'm gonna comment, uncomment that one out as well. And save. So now that I've saved that file, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this little pop-up that Lazy has has popped up here. It just says, you're, you know, a config change is detected, you can reload and hit enter. So I'm gonna hit enter, get rid of that, and restart NeoVim. Once I restart NeoVim, you can see here that Lazy has in fact installed my two plugins that I've put in that file. Awesome. So reopen my init.lua file again. And now let me show you a really cool command. It's called LSP info. I'm gonna hit enter on that. And this command essentially tells you what clients are attached to this buffer. And in this case, we haven't configured LSP config yet, so there are zero clients attached to this buffer. We'll come back and look at LSP info later once we've configured the Lua language server. So now let's talk about how to configure the Lua language server. I'm gonna open Telescope again and type in plugin configs. This is the file I keep all of my plugin configurations in. Hit enter and then go all the way down with Shift G. And I'm gonna open up NVIM tree just because I like to look at my file structure or my tree structure while I'm doing this. All right, at the very bottom, I have two require statements for LSP config. The first one is LSP config Lua LS setup. Now, the Lua LS is specific to the Lua language server. So if you're configuring this for an entirely different language, this is gonna be different. And in order to see what it's gonna be, go into the GitHub repository for NVIM LSP config, click on this configs hyperlink here, open that up, and you can see here that there are configurations for all kinds of language servers. So in our case, we're, we're doing Lua LS, so here it is, click on that, and it gives us all kinds of configurations, but we're just gonna do the very basic one. So we need this statement here. And this will configure the Lua LS language server. We're also gonna require LSP mappings. Now, LSP mappings is a file that I've made here. So if you go into my tree structure, you can see that I have LSP mappings right here. It's a new file that I created under my Lua directory, LSP mappings. And what that has is mappings recommended by NVIM LSP config, just to make things a little easier and to invoke these functions a lot easier. You can find that in the GitHub repo. If you scroll down, down to the quick start and this ingested configuration, you can see that uh, there are some global mappings that they have defined here. I've just copied and pasted these global mappings into this file and then required it. Cool. So there is uh, one more thing that we need to do to make this work with NVIM CMP. All right, so plugin configs. Now, if you don't know what NVIM CSP is, uh, check, I recommend that you check out my video on what NVIM CMP is. It's a completion plugin that helps you complete code. Um, I'll link that up here in the corner. But this completion plugin can also take in an LSP server as a source, so it'll help It'll help you with writing functions that you've already defined with function signatures. It can also help you pop up or autocomplete those. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment this line here to tell NVIM CMP that we're gonna be using the LSP as a source. So use GCC there. Great, save, and go ahead and restart NeoVim. All right, so now that I'm here, I'm gonna show you that LSP info command again. So LSP info, this looks a little different now. Now we can see that the Lua LS client is attached to this buffer. 
the file type is Lua, auto start is true, running in single file mode, and the command it's using, it's using our Lua language server command that we got the version for earlier. So it's pretty cool. This kind of is a check or a way to verify that your language server is indeed talking to NeoVim correctly. All right, so what are some cool things that you can do with MVM LSP now that you have it installed and configured? Well, you'll notice right away that you have these particular uh, markings on the left here on the status line, status column line. And these are what are we called diagnostics. And you can see also that some tokens are also underlined. To cycle through diagnostics, you can press square bracket D to go to the previous diagnostics. So here you can see we have an undefined global VIM. There as well, and there as well, there as well. And then here you can also see we have an unused local execute. So that's telling you you're not using this, um, this variable. Same with that FN1 as well, and so forth. You can just cycle through these diagnostics. Another cool thing that you can do is apply code actions. So say for example, I have a space there. Now you can see the diagnostic has appeared and it says line with trailing space. Okay, well, let's try to fix that automatically with code actions. The hotkey for that is leader C A for code actions. And you can see here one of our actions that we can do is clear all post entif spaces. So I hit one to apply that code action and enter. And now you can see that the language server has removed these trailing spaces. That's pretty cool. All right, well, let's also demo how functions work with the LSP. All right, so let's make a function here. Uh, let's make a function with three parameters, three string parameters uh, that loops 10 times and prints each string each time. Okay, well, we're gonna make a function here that does this, and I'm gonna use my handy dandy GP plugin that we demoed in an earlier video to make this function. So to do that, I just do GP implement Hit enter, enter, and have ChatGPT generate that function for me. Cool, so it automatically inserted that function. Now, let's go ahead and demonstrate how the LSP works for functions. So say I want print strings 10 times, say I want to invoke that. Well, as soon as I start typing print, you can see here that my function appears. The reason it appears is because mvmcmp is now using the LSP as a source. So I can cycle through that. And not only that, but I can also see here the si signature, the method signature. I take three strings, string one, string two, string three. And as I'm typing, I can go ahead and finish that off. So if I'm in here and I don't remember what the functions are, say that the function definition is somewhere up you know, near the top of the file and I don't have it in view, I can always press control K to view that method signature help helper at any time. So I'll do hello, test, hello. Cool. Now, if I wanted to view the uh, document string for this function, I just put my cursor over that function, hit shift G, and I can see it here again. Another neat command is, uh, or another neat hockey is GD, which stands for go to definition. So if I'm here and my cursor's on this function call, I can hit GD and my cursor will automatically go to where that function is defined. Cool. Last but not least, I'm gonna show you how to restart um, an LSP server if you ever needed to. So to do that, you just do LSP, restart, and then space, and then here you can cycle through any of the um, LSP clients that you have. So in this case, it'll be Lua LS, hit enter, and that'll restart the server for me. All right, folks, well, that has been LSP config. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. It might have, I know it was a little bit of a longer video, but it's a long to, lot to cover here. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next week.